where Jonesy has taught me over and over and over and throughout the years one of the first teachings he taught me was to notice to pay attention to those that are in heaven some are standing and some are sitting the sitting in heaven is of the higher significance of maturity mm -hmm. and um, it's interesting how the Father has bestowed upon us the gratuity or the will that uh, he made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus on thrones higher than the rest. Yes, you find the groups of individuals the majority of them are seen standing. You got mm -hmm. those standing on the sea of glass. Mm -hmm. You got those standing at the altar. You have um, the um, people that come out of great tribulation. They're standing. They're priests ministering at the altar. Then you see those that are seated around the throne, which are the elders. And then. <clears throat> Basically, it does not say as such that the angels are standing around the throne because he says, I heard the voice right. of many elders round about the throne. The, the angels aren't even there. They're in the temple mm. perfecting the judgments and directing the things that are going to happen in the tribulation period on earth. They have supreme authority. The elders don't really get their authority until they come to earth. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> they, set, they set up the, uh, the, the, the rulership. The Lord says, I will make you, uh, basically, I give you rule over all the nations. Well, that happens at the second coming. It doesn't happen during the tribulation period. Right. So the movers and the shakers actually are the angels that are directing everything up until the second coming point. You had made mention to us that the scripture uh, tells us that uh, the world to come will not be ruled over by <laughs> angels. Yes. Yet you've spoken out rulership positions and directive positions, high order positions coming from angels. Yes. But we also do know that those angels are the holy angels or yeah. they're, they're different angels? No, they're the Protestants. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the former angels over the churches. Then, at the gathering, they become angels over the churches. Mm -hmm. At the rapture, they become the pillar angels, right. the temple angels, and they are <coughs> the influence is manifested in so many different ways, yes. When is it when they become the nomenclature holy angels? Rapture. At the rapture. Okay. Rapture. Because they receive their glory yeah. at the rapture. Okay. Yeah. But we find that their influence is so high, manifested, that their presence is in that uh, uh, um, illustrated or uh, recounted. What's recounted is their influence. You hear a voice. Do this. Don't do that. You hear a voice. I heard a voice around the throne of many angels. You hear a voice coming out of the temple. Uh, now is the time. So you're looking at, you aren't even looking at them. You're looking at the influence they're manifesting, which is far above in the elder influence. The only one that's commensurate with that is the Father himself and the Son. So we see to that degree the level of authority that they give, the level of position that they give, preeminent. They're the ones <coughs> that are defining, <laughs> crafting the judgments that are going to fall. Where does, where does judgment falls? Who is going to distribute the judgment? Because seven angels 
come out of the temple and are given direction. <clears throat> the first one is told where to pour out his judgment and the judgment is crafted to elucidate, to, to uh, establish a condition. All seven of them are directed where they are to. And these are prototokis. So you see this hierarchy here. That, mind boggling. What's interesting is that, see, these angels didn't develop with YHVH. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no. So, no, no, so no, no. you know, it, it, you know, and they are also sons of God. Most definitely. <laughs> this is the preeminent. Uh, the things that the scripture talks about. What we look at, the elders, the angels, constitute the church of the firstborn. And the scripture talks about in Hebrews, when you read Hebrews 12th chapter, it talks about the writer of Hebrews is saying they emanate a joyous gathering. So, even though they are preeminently powerful, so powerful that John would bow the knee to one of them, they are filled with joy, filled with uh, what would be considered a high degree of pleasure on a godly level, such that they're a group unto themselves. Other people can't enter into that mm -hmm. because it's the the height of this is beyond entering into. They are a sealed group that dominate everything. Is that also true that the sealing of the group is also because they went through an experience together? Or yes. experiences together? Yes. And without that, having gone through that experience, you couldn't comprehend what you it is wouldn't to be qualify. Like. Right. without going through these experiences. Right. And in that respect, this is what constitutes the group. It's just like in war. <coughs> you had it, that, that movie, A Band of Brothers. Yes. He talked about the experiences mm -hmm. that they all went together in which everybody can relate. Uh, other people, even though they're in the military, even though they've had experiences too, can't relate to this because it's a unified group. Right experiencing this thing. Well, the same thing is true with us. People uh, are always going to be loved by us, always going to be treated, you know, fairly by us and everything, but they can't enter into the group that we are constituted because we have unique experiences unto ourselves. Even mm -hmm. those outside. And had they chosen to participate with us, they'd be part of the group. Of course, absolutely. But since they chose to keep outside, they will never be totally part of the group. Well, since okay. you've also taught, uh, taught us that when somebody doesn't apply themselves to the same level as everybody else, and they miss out on opportunities to increase their understanding, in other words, they miss lessons, <coughs> they can never catch up, can they? No. So it doesn't matter what they do after they repent, they will never ever be at the same level as they should have no. been if they no. yeah. No. You remember Jesus talks about the parable of the prodigal son? Yes. He spent all his wealth, wasted it. But he was restored mm -hmm. to fullness of sonship. Yes. But he never got his wealth. No. His heritage. No. He squandered it. The old the older son, the older brother. The older son got everything. Yeah. So it's the same here. If you if you Maintain your commitment from the beginning to the end, and you will share in the totality of everything. Amen. God is eminently fair in all things. Mm. The person only has themselves to blame if they find themselves on the outs or lacking in any particular way. And it's only going to be, I believe, at the time when the Father reveals the glory of the signs that people are going to see it for what it really is. Sure. So I almost that close to say, you know, Mr. Jones, you, what you're what you're doing is you're talking about every American that has their own house, 
as a garage full of stuff. Okay? And they have to keep it housed and keep it dry and keep it up. They have to spend some kind of time maintaining yes. their stuff. Okay? That's not getting off of you. That's increasing your 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 